Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of DGS. We have officially the Garadips up at the stand at last, and now we're going to find out what happened during their little squabble on the night of the the incident, not the murder, because she's still alive. Make sure we clarify that. The Garadips War. That day, I forgot what caused it. But I had a fight with my wife. The candelabra fell over and the flames caught the rug. I scrambled to put out the fire and open the window. Meanwhile, I was throwing anything I could get my hands on at him. We own quite a few knives, so we wouldn't notice if one went missing. The weapon used in the attack was one of ours. I'd like you to prove it with evidence. How are we going to do that? It sounds like there was quite a bloody war at your house that night. But the attacks sound incredibly one-sided. I must admit that my side was at a devastating disadvantage. If a ceasefire had come even one minute later, I would have been a pillar of flames. Oh, but, well, if I might say so as an old soldier, a moment can make the difference between life and death on the battlefield. This all seems like an awfully exaggerated way to talk about a husband and wife spat. <laughs> but... It seems that it would be quite difficult to establish where this knife came from with the testimony we just heard. Well, it is missing a piece. In the midst of battle, one's become, one becomes unaware of one's surroundings. I don't think we can expect any testimony beyond this from these folks. He's got a point. I was thinking the same thing. If that's the case, then it falls to us to find the final truth with our cross-examination. Yes, you're right. Now then, Defense, you may be great in your cross-examination. Let's do it. In regards to the case, I believe you told us yesterday. Cause. Yes, um, as I recall, it all began with the letter between the pages of Garadus-sama's book. Oh, well, that's right. The one expressing all those passionate feelings for Mr. Garadus. That is why I discovered that secret. Is that right? And because of that, Garadus-sama received several slaps across the face. That sounds dreadful. Perfectly hellish. <laughs> Poor Garadim. I went to all the trouble of having pretended to forget, and you just go and grab every detail. And you went and slipped quite a bit of false information in there, too. Which bit? <laughs> that quivering lip. It looks like the roots of this fight run pretty deep. So, what happened after that explosion of slapping? The fire also caught onto the furniture, right? The only furniture that was important to me, personally, like the bookshelf and the easy chair. I just happened to have some water for my bath on hand that night, so I used that to put out the fire. What a dangerous situation. Our residence is the third floor, and the city plumbing still doesn't reach the west side of the road. Water must be collected during daylight hours from the common faucet. The lodgers are always saying how they can't use water at night as well. But that mustache Asian seems to have bought himself some water. You're referring to the defendant, not Sumi Soseki-san? He's always getting money from his homeland in the form of study abroad scholarship money or some such. He certainly is privileged being able to drink tea at night. Uh, so Seki-san didn't look all that privileged to me. It appears as though he used all his money to buy books. In any case, I dump water over my burning furniture. Even though your rug and furniture were burning? Well, to me, at that moment... 
my desire to throw things won out over my desire to put out things, and nothing more. Incidentally, I experienced the same thing with my Sasato Toss. How did she know what I was thinking? Um, now witness, try to remember. Among the things you were throwing, was one of them a knife? I honestly don't remember. But, well, I'm not an ogre, you know. Bread, cabbage, garlic, towels, sponges, napkins. Uh, okay, John. What up? Napkins? <laughs> really? Napkins? Is everything alright, get it up, son? Of son. What is it? Did you have a thought about your wife's testimony just now? I am not sure you call it a thought exactly. As far as I can recall, the things I found flying me that night were mostly hard and heavy objects like books, the fire poker, and bricks. Huh? On top of that, I feel like they were being thrown at me with incredible- <laughs> Show! This is a courtroom! Ah, oh, my! What have I done? I'm so sorry, dear. Is no place sacred to her? <laughs> but think about it. I couldn't possibly throw such heavy objects. Well, actually, if you could just take a look at this, I think you'll understand. Is there something wrong with that pipe? Say, I was holding this pipe like this that night, too. And I found myself under heavy fire and went flying. And when I went to pick it up, I actually stepped on it and it snapped. Your pipe snapped. Something hard smacked into it and sent it flying out of my hand. For the time being, I've repaired it with tape so I can continue using it. <sighs> Honestly, dear, you're such an exaggerator. I wonder. Garrett of San's testimony just now was important, doesn't have any special meaning. It was definitely important. The defense believes that the statement just now was incredibly important. There's only one thing that was made clear through this retired soldier's testimony. In spite of trying to stand up for his fiery, fiery wife, he only ended up getting his heart and pipe broken. And nothing more. There's no value in adding that to the record. Hmm, indeed. There's a fact that everyone- that's a fact that everyone knows, after all. Really? Then, at the very least, could you perhaps show us your broken pipe? Uh, sure. I don't mind. <sighs> there you go. Stooping to these young people's whims again. Very well. The court will accept this pipe into evidence for the time being. Something tells me we need to look at this pipe in question. Mr. Garrido's pipe. It seems that it was dropped on the floor in the middle of a merry couple's spat and broke. I apologize for speaking out of turn. It just seems such a waste to simply let your request be overruled like that. Uh, no. I'm grateful. I'll gladly have a look at this evidence that susana not got for me. Let's do it. Let's look at this pipe in question. Oh, snap! Huh? I just saw something gleaming inside the pipe. Yes, you're right. There seems to be something caught in the bottom of the pipe bowl. Let's turn it upside down and see if we can shake it out. This is... It's a broken piece of metal. It almost looks like... The tip of a blade. Or something of that nature. A blade? This couldn't really be... Oh, but it is. A broken piece of metal. A metal piece of metal. A, sm a metal piece of metal. A small piece of metal thought to have snapped 
off the tip of a blade. Found stuffed inside Garrett of San's pipe. Well, I think we just figured out uh, our, where our, uh, our missing uh, blade tip knife was for the murder, not murder weapon, but you know, the thing that hit the Mrs. Green. Looks like a band-aid made of white tape. Just looking at it is kind of painful. The blueness of this pipe matches Gerda-san's robe, so... I can't help thinking it looks unlucky. Like it's foreshadowing something bad. He's still determined to use it even though it's snapped in two. It must be an item of great sentimental value. Either that, or he just can't afford a new one. Something tells me it's the latter. Now then, the witness will continue their testimony. I'd like to hear more about the knives in your room. Mata! And just, what exactly does that mean? Well, it's simply the truth of the matter. Whittling pipes and constructing fishing lures are hobbies of mine, you see. I also enjoy making wooden figurines and leather crafting. Sometimes those knives get replaced around the room. Plus, we have several identical ones. A nearby market had a sale on a set of 20, and I simply couldn't resist. Incidentally, we also eat our meals with a knife and a knife, you see. A knife and a knife? <laughs> uh, I don't think it was really necessary for you to share that. What? <laughs> That was a pretty goosebump-inducing and unnecessary bit of testimony. I'm sure they simply don't want to believe it. They don't want to believe that the weapon that harmed the victim was one of their own knives. I can certainly understand the feeling, but... Now then, witnesses, continue your testimony. Y yes sir! Oh, whoops. I don't have any dialogue for this. My bad. Okay, we're back. We're back to where we need to be. Um, actually, this actually brings up a good question that I want to ask you guys. Every once in a while, I do occasionally think too far ahead and accidentally press something where I don't actually have a translation for. And I was wondering, would you like me to just let it play? and ask my translator to translate the dialogue. There, it won't be voiced because obviously I'm doing this in real time, so if I don't have the lines and I'm not gonna read it, I can't. Um, so I was wondering if, uh, if my translator's up for it, if you guys want me to leave the extra footage and just do a text translation of it. And yeah, pretty much like that. I mean, it's a little extra work for my translator, so if, she, if she's up to doing it, then she's up to doing it. If she's not, then she's not. But I just want to get an input on you guys, see if you want me just to leave those footages or not. So, anyway, what we're supposed to be doing here, in this last statement, is to present that broken knife piece. Garrett-san, have a good look at this, if you would. Um, I can't have a very good look. Huh? Back in the service, they used to call me Hawkeye John, but that was a long time ago. These days, even when reading my favorite books by the fire. There are times when I can hardly distinguish between B and D and P and Q. Honestly, I wish you'd think a little more about the person who has to tell you which it is every time. That sounds like a lot of work. What is this insignificant little piece of metal? It may be the broken tip of a blade. It may look insignificant, but it's an incredibly important piece of evidence. That's fascinating. And where, pray tell, did you pick up such a thing? It was lodged inside Mr. Gerdiff's pipe. I inside my pipe, you say? How the blazes did it get? So, what you are saying about this- What are you saying about this small bit of metal? Don't tell me. You intend to claim that it has something to do with this case.
I do. Wh what? If you think about this metal piece in combination with a certain other piece of evidence, it makes it clear who really stabbed the victim. It would seem that the defense has a theory. In that case, the defense will present that piece of evidence. Which piece of evidence reveals the truth behind this small, this small metal piece? The knife. <laughs> Here we have the knife that stabbed the victim. If you look closely, a small piece has been broken off the blade. Crimes committed with sorts of poor quality blades found in the downtown markets are ten a penny. It likely hit the victim's bone when she was stabbed and snapped off. So then, the tip of this knife's blade. I think it's safe to assume that it's still lodged in the victim's body. As a matter of fact, that's not the case. The broken tip of this nice blade is... The piece of metal that was found inside Mr. Gerda's pipe! Huh? Oh. Whoa! First damage animation from Baroque! Is something wrong, Lord Von Zeeks? This is utterly ridiculous. The broken tip knife in this fragment. They're a perfect match. Wh what? O order, order, order. I is this some sort of Asian witchcraft? <sighs> this is no witchcraft. I believe the more appropriate term would be a miracle. A miracle, you say? It looks like Prosecutor Von Zeeks has figured it out. Prosecutor- uh, Defense! Just what is the meaning of this? Right, um, in this situation, the important point is, when this fragment found its way into the pipe, within this situation, the important point is, when this fragment found its way into the pipe, wouldn't you say? And that was clearly established in the testimony we just heard. See, I was holding this pipe like this that night too. When I found myself under heavy fire, it went flying. Something hard smacked into it and sent it flying out of my hand. It, it can't be. There was a domestic dispute between the Garretives occurring at the same time as the attack, during which Mrs. Garretives threw a knife. Then, the knife sent Mr. Garretives' pipe flying out of his hand. And that's when the knife's tip broke. Is that what you're saying? Ah! Oh. And the fragment that broke off at that time was embedded inside the pipe that had gone flying. But that's... that's miraculous! The only time it would have made sense for this fragment to make its way into the pipe. That's the only time, excuse me. Then the broken tip knife flew out the open window in that state. In other words, this broken tipped weapon fell from the Gerda's window and embedded itself in the victim's back. No, no way. It can't be true! I need more tea! <laughs> That was a rather flavorful theory. You've gathered up all the insignificant details and rearranged them into something that seems logical. That is some truly Japanese-like handiwork. Wh what? However, your theory is not more than pretense. After all, There's a fatal contradiction with it. Incoming leg. Eh? 
Lord Von Zeeks, what do you mean? What's this fatal contradiction with the assertion the defense just made? It's incredibly simple. The knife stabbed the victim in the back. Well, there's a simple answer to that, too! It, in the back? Uh... That... That's right! That's true, isn't it? I see she's gone back to slapping him. Oh, what was that for? Why are you so worked up all of a sudden? Try thinking over the facts of the case one more time. The victim was walking along the walkway when she was stabbed and collapsed on the spot. Even if a weapon had been dropped from above, it would have been impossible for it to have stabbed her in the back. Ah! No, I'm pretty sure it's possible. We just need to get to that point. Order, order! Right, that's exactly it. Has she been stabbed by a falling knife? It should have gotten lodged in her head, right? Well... What's going on? That attorney's at a loss for words. There's something dodgy about all this. But I wonder what really happened here. This seems to be quite a serious oversight on the part of the defense. As long as there's no such a there's so such a single contradiction, it means your logic is incomplete. Your theory has not been proven. I'm gonna prove it right the fuck now! No no will stop it! Come on! I just caught a glimpse of the truth. There shouldn't have been anything wrong with the path that's brought me to this point. Or the way forward to be closed off all of a sudden by a single contradiction is just... So, in other words... If you can just explain the contradiction, the path will be open again, right? Susato-san. At this moment, Narahodo-sama, you've been caught off guard by something unexpected, and your mind's gone a bit blank. If the path that led you here has been correct, then there must be an answer to this. Somewhere, among the information recorded in the court record. It seems that I was correct. The Japanese have no rebuttal to offer. The silence tells me just one thing. Which is that you acknowledge your own claim as, been, as being incorrect. No! Not done yet. We're not done yet. Breathe, Naruto. you got this! The reason there's a contradiction isn't because my logic is incorrect. It's merely training to lead me to a more polished explanation of the truth. It's true. A falling knife wouldn't have been able to stab someone who was just walking by in the back. Under normal circumstances, that is. What did you say? What do you mean, defense? A certain piece of evidence tells us the whole story. How did a falling knife end up stabbing the victim in the back? There is a reason. Huh? What are you? That's ridiculous. It seems that we finally arrived at the end. The court orders the defense to present evidence. The final contradiction. If I can just solve that, then ahead of me lies a single, unmistakable truth at last. The evidence that explains the reason that the falling knife stabbed the victim in the back is... Presenting the fourth book. <laughs> Something that was discovered at the very scene of the crime. The fourth book. This is the final evidence that the defense has to present. This... This burnt book, you say? As I recall, that was the book from Mr. Gerdiv's room. What were the circumstances that led this book to finding its way onto the crime scene? The answer is clearly shown in this photo. The victim is holding Gerdiv's son's book in her hand. But that book was... put into the victim's hand by that beat officer. That's what he testified. 
It was when he was transferring the crime scene to the opposite side of the road, wasn't it? In regards to that, Officer O'Malley made an important statement earlier. But why did you put that book in the victim's hand? Huh? Oh, that was already like that to begin with. When we hurried over to the crime scene that night, the victim was clutching this book in her hand. That's why I moved her just like that, still holding the book. In other words, the victim picked this book up of her own free will. And naturally, that was before she was stabbed. But, well, of course! No one would bother picking up a book if they'd just been stabbed. So then, what possessed the victim to pick this book up in the first place? Oh, oh could it be? That, if that were the case, I could certainly imagine why. Huh? We know that this book fell from the third floor window of the landlord's boarding house and onto the walkway. And that was just when the incident occurred. At precisely that moment, the victim was walking along the walkway turned the walkway turned crime scene in the fog. When suddenly, a book dropped down in front of her. So, the book I threw. Mrs. Garadov, what do you think she did? She was just walking along when suddenly a book falls and hits the ground in front of her. Well, I can't imagine such a situation myself. Perhaps... She probably started by reaching for it. Maybe she picked it up. The book, I mean. And here we have our answer. She picked it up. She automatically reached out to pick up the book that had fallen down in front of her. Where would her back have been if she were doing that? It would be facing up, completely unprotected. And then, as soon as she had her hand on the book... The next item that fell from the window was the knife, and it embedded itself into her back. And that's when someone else happened to be walking along the walkway just behind Viridian-san. The defendant, Natsumi Soseki. Oh! The moment that Soseki-san witnessed was when the victim suddenly collapsed before his very eyes and in the thin fog, he didn't see the knife falling from above. Ah! Meanwhile, there was no way that the officer couple could have noticed any other figures on the scene. After all, there was no true criminal who fled the scene. It was a sad accident that resulted from an unlikely series of consequence, uh, coincidences. And that is the truth behind this case. Checkmate. What do you think, Gerdev san? When you first showed me the knife, I thought about it. I wondered if maybe that was what happened. See? <gasps> you! Joan sama. Yes, even if it wasn't on purpose, or if it was incredibly unlikely, it doesn't change what I did, does it? He's like a wilted sunflower. The poor thing. I admit everything. That night, I was insane with fury. I threw some books. And I... I also threw that knife.
dear. Yes, I know. I'm truly sorry. <laughs> truly. <laughs> truly sorry. <gasps> oh man, John! <laughs> now it's John's turn to pick him. <gasps> what the heck? Oh, it's burnt clothes! Oh my lord! This is the couple case! Oh. Lord Von Zeeks, how is Mrs. Garrett doing? She was carried to a bed at the medical office. She seems to be in a great deal of confusion, but... We can't assume that she will calm down in time. It shouldn't be a problem. A tragedy she caused unintentionally with her own hands. They will need to prepare themselves to face it. I don't know whether the phrase every cloud has a silver lining is relevant here, but... Relevant. But, according to an update we'd received from the hospital, the victim is on her way to recovery. And that it was only a matter of time until she regained consciousness. In the end, we still don't know anything about the victim herself, do we? Are we gonna get to see her DGS too? But, I'm so glad that she's going to be okay. Yes, you're right. Now then, defend it, Natsumi Soseki. Natsume. Is it Natsume? Natsume. Uh, yes, sir! On behalf of the English court system, we would like to extend an apology to you. For the numerous and immeasurable injustices that have been done to you, an innocent researcher visiting from the Far East. We are deeply sorry. Wow. Oh. No, I'm the one who should be apologizing. So, Seki-san. That night, when I saw that young lady suddenly collapsed in front of me, I was in such a state of confusion that I ended up making a truly ludicrous assumption. Assumption? The lady was dead. I was convinced of, of that. If memory serves, the beat officer Pat-sama also mistakenly believed that. I guess she really must have looked dead. It's been a year since I arrived here in England, and yet I still haven't managed to become accustomed to life here in the Imperial City. I spend every day under the painful weight of the feeling that I'm being pursued by evil spirits. So Seki-san is certainly a very high-strung person. Yes, unfortunately. That's why, that night, I had also convinced myself that that lady had been possessed by an evil spirit and died. What I should have done at that time wasn't to dump my books and flee. I should have called a doctor, or notified the police, and nothing more. For the crime of having dealt a deep blow to the bond of trust between our two countries, as an exchange student, I also offer my deepest apologies. The truth behind this case appears to have been that it was all an illusion brought on by a chain of un unfortunate events. The illusion stirred us up and caused us to jump to mistaken conclusions. Lord Von Zeeks, a new defense attorney who came, who come to us across the ocean from the land of Japan. In this courtroom, the two of you broke that chain. This was a splendid trial. Sir! Aw, he got a compliment! Bless. Now then, wise jurors. Yes, your honor. It's 
as time at last. It is as it is time at last for your final decision. That's what the court has determined. Now, we request your final verdict. As the head juror, I am confident that we can provide a verdict that no one need be ashamed of. The truth can be harsh sometimes, can't it? Wow, I never imagined we'd arrive at a conclusion that would end in my neighbor being taken away. This retired soldier has come to stand in his wife, stand in as his wife's messenger. It's about time. Now I can finally get on to work for today. Well, I'll certainly have a tale to tell my grandchildren when I get home. In that case, jurors, it's time to state your final decision at last. I will now hand down the defendant, Natsumi Soseki's final verdict. Not guilty! Fireworks and confetti! Whew. Wow, what a case. This is going over, but you know what? I'm not stopping. We're gonna finish this. I'm gonna try to finish this. Finally, defendant. Yes, your honor! With this case all cleared up, you are now free. I hope that you will continue to bridge the gap between our two nations with your research. And I sincerely hope that you never find yourself in the defendant's chair again. Yes, yes, that goes without saying. I, Natsumi Sozeki, swear it! Filled with emotion! Oh, Sozeki. That concludes the trial for today. Whew. Oh man! Ah, uh, my leg's falling asleep. <sighs> okay, let's see if we can get this done. Same day at 3:17 in the afternoon at the Old Bailey Defendant's Lobby. Ah, substitute. Huh? Oh, you mean me? Well, obviously. Do you see any other substitute around here? How should I know that? He seems to have really trimmed it down from the substitute exchange student Naruhoto that he started with. Personally, I wish he would have just shortened it to Naruhoto. Ah, at last! Freedom! Thy name is Soseki! I'm rejoicing! Filled with laughter! He certainly seems happy. He said he was filled with laughter. Wouldn't it be easier to understand if he just laughed like a regular person? Oh, Substitute! You, you really did it! You really saved me! Not really. It's because you weren't the one who hurt the victim. I'm so glad that everyone finally understands that. No! That's not what I meant! My dear Substitute! Yes? As I mentioned earlier, I haven't been able to adjust to life here in the Imperial City. When I step out into the city and look around me, everyone is foreign and I'm surrounded by giant towers made of brick. The English look down at me from those distant heights and laugh. Look at that shrimp. I'm certain that's just your imagination. However, today, you, Substitute, managed to blast away it at that insignificant melancholy of mine. You stood upon that magnificent platform and didn't so much as tremble in front of that line of Brits. You used words to fight to the very end as their equal and exposed the truth that no one else could see. When I looked up at the fireworks being fired at the courtroom ceiling, my heart was screaming, Long live humanity! I'm really happy to hear you say that. This will make a great story to tell my friends back home. Huh? A story? Aha, I see. So this is where you folks were. 
Sorry to have kept you waiting. I overslept just a tad. Uh, home summer. Oh, that was a close one. But it looks like I managed to make it in time somehow. Eh? So, the trial's about to start. Fight your hardest, Mr. Narahodo. Um... We actually just finished. What? Seriously? You sure lost quickly? Oh my god, Sherlock! That! Ah, you're... The Sherlock Holmes! Hmm? Have we met? Um, this is Soseki-sama. You were the one who arrested him. Oh, that's right. I didn't recognize you. I've only seen you in that dark cave you call a boarding house, or that dank cell in the detention center, see? Staying you in a bright lit room like this one, I had no idea who you were. Harsh. You bastard! Damn you, Sherlock Holmes! Thanks to you that I had to face such a traumatic... The things I want to say to you. Yes, the number reaches to the heavens! Oh my, how rude of me. Now I remember. As I recall, you're... The one who ran from the crime scene, weren't you? Abandoning the poor victim in the process. Eh? If you brought her to the hospital right away... The victim might have managed to regain consciousness by now. But, well, I suppose it was unavoidable. I suppose anyone would be startled after something like that. He got you there! I'm deeply sorry for what I did. Hmm? So what was it that you wanted to say to me? Oh, nothing in particular. <laughs> ah, pardon me! I just couldn't help finding that amusing. Poor Soseki-san. But anyway, this all turned out rather well, didn't it? You ended up having a pleasant experience, and for free, too. As far as I could see, you don't appear to be to have been found guilty. It's no good at all. What do you mean? After all, I'm... Cursed! By evil spirits! And even the Grim Reaper! Uh... Prosecutor Baroque von Zeeks. Don't think I've forgotten when that prosecutor is running the trial. Even if a defendant is cleared not guilty, they'll curse. They'll be. They're still cursed to die. You'll be fine, Soseki sama. Huh? In the event that a Grim Reaper or any such wicked creatures show up, I, Susato, will certainly protect you. To really? Really? You're gonna throw me? With this always deadly, Susano Flip! Would you mind warning me next time you're going to do that, Susano-san? <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't mess with Susano, Soseki. So, what are you gonna do now, Soseki-san? You mentioned something about making a story of today's experiences. Actually, I'm planning to return to Japan in the near future. Huh? It's been one year since I arrived here in Great Britain. Commuting to the university, requesting instruction from the professors. Commuting to the library, going around to used bookshops. I was able to experience the city that gave birth to such an amazing world of literature. I realized that my mission was to transmit this culture to our homeland. So, Seki-sama... So, in other words, to put it simply, you're afraid of the Grim Reaper's curse, so you're going back to where you came from. Is that it? No! You got it all wrong! The more I learn about literature, the more aware I become of a mysterious feeling growing inside me. When I get home, I want to try writing something with my own hands. I see. Yoseki san's novel. Novel. I sure would like to read that. Well then, Mr. Naruto, what are you going to do now? Us? Will you be returning home to Japan with that mustache gentleman? Why would we do that? 
Not even a week has passed since we arrived in London. I would say we're just getting started. If memory serves, you're staying in a hotel right now, yes? Yes. We were planning to look for a cheap boarding house before we end up going broke, though. I calculated that our study abroad scholarship will have been sucked dry in just ten days. Ah! If you like, you could stay in my boarding house! Uh, you mean that windowless room? Well, that's true. But at least it has a floor, walls, and a ceiling. Right. It also comes with a bonus curse with some evil spirits! Oh, evil spirits, you say? I certainly did. At night, while you're sleeping, the evil spirits come and choke you! It's quite a pleasant awakening. Could you give us a little time to think it over? In that case, folks, how would you feel about coming to my boarding house? Huh? Well, see, a vacancy just opened up in our boarding house. It's in the attic, though. Can you really call that a vacancy? We talked things over with the landlord this morning, and Iris is giving it a good cleaning right now. You can come right away. You don't have any luggage anyway, right? Well, what a splendid idea! To think that we could be allowed to stay in the attic of the world-famous detective's office! There's so many feelings welling up in my heart right now. Yes. It looks like searching for something else is no longer an option. Right, that settles it then. This evening, Iris will show you just how skilled she is at making welcome making welcome feasts. You're welcome. You're quite welcome to join us, Mr. Soseki. I'm grateful for the invitation. In that case, I'll begin the processing for Soseki Sama's release. Tosada-san sure looks happy. Substitute. It looks like my experience here weren't all bad. I'm so glad that I was able to meet you here in London. I'm glad I met you too. And we're already going to say goodbye. We'll miss you. I realize that Japan is where I belong. Substitute, I'm sure we'll meet again someday. Yes. I wonder if I'll be a proper attorney by then. Hopefully I too will be on the road to becoming a, com a competent literary man. Well folks, it looks like the carriage has arrived. Shall we be off, Mr. Narahodo? Yes, Holmes-san. Surely, Mr. Soseki will be free to go in time to make it to dinner. And so... The curtains closed on Soseki-san's trial. Boarded a carriage and headed for Baker Street. Same day, 4.41 p.m., the attic room. So this is... Our new office. Our office. That kind of has a nice ring to it. Yes, this is just like a dream. Look at this, Asogi. This is just the first step, but... I feel like we're getting closer to realizing your dream. What do you think, folks? Do you like it? Homesan, thank you so much. Hey, he's in casual wear now. What a splendid room! I'm so moved! I'm glad to hear it! That makes Iris and me happy, too. Well then, everyone, it's almost time for dinner. When old Mr. Soseki gets here, we'll have plenty to celebrate. Uh, Iris-sama, I will assist you. All right, in that case, I'll leave the salad to you, Susano-chan. Right! Make an avocado salad. So, 
How does it feel, Mr. Naraholdo? To have your own office here in London. It's pretty exciting. Like, I wonder what sort of things are waiting out there for me in the city. <laughs> when I opened my office here, that's exactly how I felt. Until I became aware of the darkness lurking in the city. Huh? London is the most is the world's most brilliantly shining, flashiest city, extolled for its abundance. But the brighter that light becomes, the deeper and darker the shadow it casts becomes as well. It's shadow? Well, I'm sure you're aware now of the depth of London's darkness. So, once again. I welcome you to London, Mr. Naraholdo. At the time, there was no way that I could truly have comprehended the meaning behind Holmes-san's words. I wouldn't get a glimpse into the depth of that darkness until a bit later. Ah! Oh, oh my god, I'm... I, 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 my mouth needs a break. The end! We have finished case four at last! Ugh. Oh, oh man. Ah! Uh, and that leaves the final case, chapter five, The Hound of Baskervilles, which we will get to sooner or later. Uh, ideally right now I should be heading into SOJ again to do case four, and then we'll be back to case five and finish it up. Will I finish this before DGS2? I don't know, but either way, I don't think I could even get to DGS2 as soon as it comes out, since I would have to wait for the script to be done before I can even do the LP, so... Uh, we'll see what happens when it happens, right? So, I'll see you guys in the next video, and thank you for watching.